Welcome back guys. In this video series, I'm going to be talking about different classes and their skills and passives. In this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the Druid and different skills and passives with those. In my last videos, the Necromancer, I do realize I skipped the ultimate in the Necromancer, but in this classes overview video, which was a couple videos back, I did go through those there. So if you wanted to see that, you go back there. It is timestamped, so you go right to the Necromancer and see everything there. But if you guys like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. It means a lot to me about like point two percent of you are subscribers the rest are just kind of watching without subscribing it would mean a lot to me it's free and from here let's just dive into the skills all right guys so first we're going to dive into the basic skills the very first of everything this is going to be your spirit generators uh this is going to be your left click uh let's just dive right into them so your first ability is going to be earth spike sunder the earth impaling the first enemy hit for number percent damage then your next passive your first passive for it is going to be earth spike has a number percent chance to stun enemies for number seconds then you're gonna have the split of passives and your first split is gonna be summon a second earth spike when hitting an immobilized or stunned enemy so what this means is when someone is gonna be stunned or immobilized and you hit them with earth spike you're gonna have another earth spike go at them again so you're doing the ability twice because they're immobilized or stunned when you first initially casted earth spike now your next passive between the two uh, would be fortify for a number percent of your base life whenever earth spike damages enemies who are stunned immobilized or knocked back once again when you cast earth spike on them if the enemy is already stunned immobilized or knocked back you would get this fortify next ability is wind shear conjure a piercing blade of wind dealing 17.85 percent damage your first passive for that is Wind Shear has a 35% chance to make enemies vulnerable for 4 seconds. Now with the split, the first split is each enemy hit by Wind Shear increases your movement speed by 5% for 3 seconds up to 20%. The next split is going to be Wind Shear grants number additional spirit for each enemy hit beyond the first. Alright, now we're going to go with Storm Strike. Electricity gathers around your weapon, dealing 28.35% damage to your target and chaining up to a number surrounding enemies, dealing number percent less damage for each time it chains. You gain 25% damage reduction for 3 seconds after dealing damage with Storm Strike. Enhanced Storm Strike, the first passive. Storm Strike has a number percent chance to immobilize all enemies hit for a number of seconds. Now with the split, the first split is Storm Strike has 50% chance to make enemies vulnerable for 3 seconds. The next split is Storm Strike chains to number of additional targets. Alright, so these are your casting abilities. You could be up close with them as well, but I kind of still consider them kind of casting. Now it's for the shape shifting. So first one is going to be Claw. Shape shift into a werewolf and claw at an enemy for 21% damage. The first pass that you're going to increase is Claw attack speed is increased by 10%. Now with these two splits, I like these because I'm going to go into it a little further, you guys will see, but the first one is if you kind of just want to be a normal werewolf, the next one would be if you're kind of going towards like a rabies kind of werewolf, which is uh, like we saw in Diablo 2. So the first one is going to be Claw has a 10% chance to attack twice. Now the next split is Claw applies number percent poison damage over 3 seconds. See what I mean? You have the kind of the physical aspect of it and then you have the poison. It'd be interesting to see where, where people take this. Now, next is going to be your wear bear. So this is maul. Shape shift into a wear bear and maul enemies in front of you, dealing 21% damage. The first passive for that is if an enemy is hit by maul, then fortify for 0.64% of your base life. So fortify, once again, is a way to reduce damage. It, it's another health pool added to your health. Um, and that's kind of like a shield almost. And then that you take damage. And then it, that damage is actually reduced. And when that um, pool of Fortify is gone, then you just take normal damage that's no longer reduced. The first split is going to be Mull has a 15% chance to knock down enemies for two seconds. And then the next split is going to be increase the range and radius of Mull by number percent. Now moving on to your next abilities, these are going to be Spirit. I'm going to move into the passives first and then we'll go into the abilities from there. So first passive is going to be probably for your shape shifting is critical strike chance against close enemies is increased by by three percent now this doesn't really go for shape shifting you could go, go up close without shape shifting in anything but that still probably pertains to shape shifting so next uh, ability uh passive is you gain four percent movement speed while in werewolf form this bonus persists three seconds after leaving werewolf form then iron fur you gain three percent damage reduction while in wear bear form this bonus persists three seconds after leaving wear bear form then we go to the other side 
maximum spirit is increased by three and then their split is basic skills generate five percent more spirit the next passive is your core skills cost five percent more spirit but deal ten percent increased damage all right now for abilities first one is landslide crush enemies between two pillars dealing up to 78.75 percent damage then the first passive for that is after landslide damages enemies number of times the next hit will immobilize enemies for three seconds and then with the split the first split when you immobilize or stun an enemy you gain a terremote each enemy hit by landslide consumes a terremote causing a guaranteed critical strike with 10 percent critical strike damage bonuses always have up to 30 percent chance to grant a terremote when hit when you and then the next passive is when you strike an immobilize or stun enemy with landslide an additional pillar of earth is formed all right next ability is shred shape shift into a werewolf and perform a trio of combo attacks first attack deals number percent damage second attack deals number percent damage third attack performs a large finishing move dealing number percent damage so i'm guessing um as the attacks go it does more damage uh, and i'm guessing this could be increased with uh skills uh going further into this or uh items or even these passives with that we'll go into right now so the first passive is shred gains plus number percent attack speed and heals for two percent of your maximum life if an enemy is struck the next split or the first split is shreds second and third attacks also perform a dash in addition shreds critical strike damage is increased by times number percent the dash that's pretty cool it's pretty cool uh raging shred which is the next passive is shreds third combo attack is larger and applies an additional number percent poisoning damage over number seconds remember when i said if you want to go into kind of like a rabies kind of like build it's making these abilities that are normal ability abilities also into a rabies so it's not just rabies that's your only move is rabies you get what i'm saying all right next ability pulverize shapeshift to do a werebear and slam the ground dealing 52.5 percent damage to surrounding enemies first passive is your next pulverize will overpower every number of seconds while you remain healthy now remember remain healthy the the prefix healthy means above 80 percent life all right first split is enemies hit by pulverize deal 15 percent reduced damage for four seconds Next split is enemies are stunned for a number of seconds when they are overpowered with pulverize. All right, first ability or next ability is tornado. Tornado conjure a swirling tornado that deals 105% damage. Now, tornado will go kind of like that random pathing route. Um, I know there's abilities that will change this. So it'll make them heat seeking. It'll make them do something else. Um, obviously, uh, items have stuff that can change your abilities we all know that from the beta but just know that tornado without those things will kind of go random path all right next passive for that is each time you cast tornado you have a 20 percent chance to spawn an additional tornado really cool we could love to see what those kind of uh, abilities and and uh builds make and do with that so first passive or split passive will be enemies hit with tornado have a five percent chance to become vulnerable for three seconds the next passive uh split is enemies damaged by tornado are slowed by eight percent for three seconds stacking up to number percent so i'm guessing each tornado kind of gets it up to a certain percentage and that number percent will change based on something um obviously this is all kind of before everything but um that's kind of a good intake as to what tornado can do all right next ability is lightning storm conjure a growing lightning storm that deals 26.25 percent dam damage per strike and increases the number of strikes the longer it is channeled up to a maximum of five and then the size of your this first passive is the size of your lightning storm is preserved for four seconds after channeling so you channel it right and then this um passive will make it so it does as an extended time beyond the channel the first passive is uh split passive is lightning storm has an eight percent chance to immobilize enemies hit for three seconds and the next split is lightning storm gains an additional lightning strike now moving on to the next abilities these are going to be your defensive abilities so we're going to go with passes first and then abilities obviously there's not that many passes so let's just dive right into it ancestral fortitude increase your non-physical resistance by number percent i like that a lot then the next beyond that is vigilance you gain number percent damage reduction for a number of seconds after using a defensive skill so this kind of really enhances everything that you have in this area you you could have probably all these abilities so let's just dive into what the abilities are the first one is earthen bulwark rocks surround you for three seconds granting a barrier that absorbs 10 percent of your base life in damage 
And then the first passive for that is Alden Bo Earthen Bulwark makes you unstoppable while active. And then we're gonna go into the split. The split is Rock Shrapnel flies outward when Earthen Bulwark is destroyed or expires, dealing 300% surround to surrounding enemies. This damage is increased by barrier bonuses. And then the next split is casting Earthen Bulwark grants 7.2% base life as fortitude. This would be really good, I think, into like a bear farm. You cast this and then you continue to use your bear abilities having fortitude, and then this is also helping you stay alive as well. I mean, I, I could see this also being good with werewolf, but I'm just saying as a tank, uh, this actually would help a lot. So next ability is Cyclone Armor. The passive for it is Powerful Wind Surrounds You, granting 20% non-physical damage reduction. So I wonder if this kind of like is passive as is. You don't even need to have it active. And then, you know, this going with this, that would be really cool. But uh, the active is the winds rapidly expand, knocking back enemies and dealing 15.75% damage. Now the first passive for this is enemies who are knocked back by Cyclone Armor are also slowed by 40% for 3 seconds. Now the next or first split passive is every 10 seconds Cyclone Armor intensifies, causing incoming damage to grant you 40% damage reduction for a number of seconds. The next split is enemies knocked back by Cyclone Armor become vulnerable for a number of seconds. Alright, now we're diving into the shape-shifting defensive abilities. So the first one is Blood Howl. Uh, shape-shift into a werewolf and howl furiously, healing you for 20% of your maximum life. That's huge! And I'm I guarantee that's going to be, depending on how you increase it a certain percentage, I could see it maybe going up to 40% or something, 5% every level onto it or something, I don't know, 45%. Anyway, first passive onto that, kills reduce the cooldown of Blood Howl. Oh, all right, now we go into the splits. Blood Howl, so the first split is Blood Howl has increased your attack speed by 15% for 4 seconds. Or the next one is Blood Howl also generates 20% our 20 spirit all right now we move to the werebear defensive ability shapeshift into a werebear and bellow a mighty roar reducing enemies damage dealt by 50 percent for four seconds first a passive for this is debilitating roar also fortifies you for 8.8 .8 base life nice so the first split for this is debilitating roar also slows enemies for 40 percent for its duration the next split is debilitating roar also heals you for 4% of your maximum life each second for its duration. So we're looking at a duration of four seconds. So four times four. So you're not quite getting what this is. This is kind of like an overtime and Blood Howl is more like a instantaneous. So you see kind of where it goes. This can help with if you're fortify and then you're kind of healing over time. And then this is like, uh, oh crap ability um but also as, when you do these passives you're gonna it's not gonna be an oh crap ability it's gonna be okay let me increase my attack speed while also it's reduced cooldown um for each kill so you're kind of blood howling in between like each enemy almost maybe or each um, mob of enemies and it, it just keep this up kind of like on a constant rotation All right, next abilities, companion abilities. So unlike the Necromancer, Druids do not get their companions right off the bat. But the cool thing about companions for the Druid is this ability, these abilities just need to be in your, your, um, your skill bar, and then they're automatically casted. The ability itself makes them do something. So if you have wolves in your skill bar, wolves are casted. You automatically have wolves. You don't have to recast it. They'll come back. Uh, there's probably a cooldown or anything like that. They'll come back. The thing is, when you cast the ability, you'll make your pets, your companions, do something. So this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a passive. Passive is because they're on your cool, your toolbar, your skill bar, and the active. The active is you hitting that skill. They do something. So we're going to dive into the passives first. Passive. Your companions deal times 8% bonus damage. That's the first one Call of the Wild. Next one is dealing times 3% increased damage to distant enemies double its bonus if they are also slowed, stunned, or immobilized, or knocked back. So this is probably for your caster kind of area. And then it's called Nature's Reach. And then Clarity. Gain 2 spirit when transforming into human form. So this could be when you're going like werebear into human or werewolf into human and you have different abilities you're not always in werebear you're not always in werewolf obviously if you have werebear and werewolf that wouldn't count as transforming into a human so this would be kind of like the hybrid between having one of those two but also abilities like tornado 
All right, first ability. Wolves. The passive is summon two wolf companions that bite enemies for 8.19% damage. The active, which is you making them do something, direct your wolves to focus an enemy, leaping to them and striking them for 36.75% damage. All right, first passive for them is wolves deal times 20% increased damage to immobilized, stunned, or slowed, or poisoned enemies. That's huge if you want to go into that kind of rabies build. All right, first split. When you critically strike your wolves, gain uh, number percent and attack speed for number seconds. Next passive. Your first split, your second split is your wolf's attacks have up to number percent chance to fortify you for number based at life. This is good even if you're not just a uh, werebear. I mean, if you're a werewolf, fortify would help you still. You're going to be up front. So this is really cool. Uh, this would help out a lot. All right. Next ability is Vine Creeper. Passive, a Vine Creeper periodically emerges from the ground every 7 seconds and applies a 37.8% poisoning damage over 6 seconds to an enemy in your area. Active, Vines strangle all around enemies, immobilizing them for 2 seconds and poisoning them for 31.5% damage. Wow, so like the strangling all enemies? I originally thought it was just an enemy, but this is all enemies in an area. That's huge. All right, first passive. Vine Creeper's immobilized duration is increased by one second. Next split, the first split I should say, your critical strike chance is increased by 20% against enemies strangled by the vine. Oh my gosh, that's huge. That almost makes me want to like do a Vine Creeper on a werewolf instead of wolves. We'll see, we'll see. I'll dive into that further later on. Um, then next split is Vine Creeper's active poisoning duration is increased by three seconds. All right, next ability, Ravens. Passive, number of Ravens fly above you and periodically attack enemies for 89.25% every six seconds. Active, the target area is swarmed with Ravens, dealing number percent damage over number seconds. First, passive, you have a 13.85% chance to critically strike chance for five seconds against enemies hit by Ravens. Next passive, within the first split, is two additional Ravens periodically attack enemies. Next split is enemies inside the swarm of ravens, when it is activated, become vulnerable for three seconds. All right, diving into Wraith, which you can see this is crazy. There's a lot of passes here. So we're going to dive into those passes first. The first pass is Elemental Exposure. Your storm strikes have up to 20% chance to make enemies vulnerable. All right, splitting off into that, every 18 seconds, a lightning strike hits a nearby enemy, dealing 47.25%. So this is not even like a ability. This is just you like making sure you're, you have lightning striking things just because, just because. All right, next going off, electrical strike. Uh, if you're, if the target is already immobilized, the lightning damage dealt to them is increased by number percent instead. Splitting off into that is blad, bad omen. Up to 10% chance when dealing damage to vulnerable, immobilized, or stunned enemies that a lightning strike also hits, dealing 37.25% damage. All right, next passive is increase the duration of hurricane and cataclysm by 5%. All right. So we got her. So we got Hurricane and uh, Cataclysm is not in here. I'm guessing Cataclysm is probably in the Ultimates, but Hurricane is in this branch area. So this passive, which isn't even a passive branch of a Hurricane, is helping Hurricane. Next passive is while in Werebear form, you receive 5% additional healing from all sources. Then branching off of that is when you remain in Werebear form for at at least second, uh, 30 seconds, your next skill will overpower. All right, passiving over here, crushing. Earth. Earth skills deal 5% increased damage to slow, stunned, immobilized, or knockback enemies. And then branching off into a split. I don't know if this is going to be a split where you can only do one or the other, but we'll see. Um, we got first one is critical strikes with earth strike with earth skills fortify you for number base percent life and then stone guard while you have fortify for over 50% of your maximum life your earth skills deal times 4% increased damage. All right. So next passive is oh it looks like for poison. So poison enemies are slowed by 8% and then we got the next passive split off that is poison enemies take number percent additional critical strike damage and then splitting off of that even further is critical strikes with werewolf skills deal eight percent of their base light damage as poisoning damage over four seconds all right so this this is really kind of going into your poisoning area nothing really here helps your werewolf form we got mending here i mean this helps your werewolf if you're going rabies but what happens if you're not 
So we'll see. I mean, this is probably because Rabies is in this branch that this is helping Rabies out. But you, you get what I'm saying. Nothing really here is helping Werewolf unless you're the Rabies poisoning Werewolf. The first ability is Hurricane. Form a Hurricane around you that deals 102.37% damage to surrounding enemies for over 8 seconds. First passive is enemies who are damaged by Hurricane are slowed by 25% for 2 seconds. Then next passive, the split between the two, is Hurricane has a 15% chance to make enemies vulnerable for 3 seconds. The next split is enemies affected by Hurricane deal 20% less damage. Then we got Trample. Trample, uh, shape shift into a Werebear, become unstoppable and charge forward dealing 26.25% damage and knocking back enemies. Enemies who are knocked back into terrain take an additional 47.25% damage and are stunned for 3 seconds. Alright, net passive off of that is Trample deals number percent bonus damage. This bonus is reduced by number percent for each enemy hit after the first. So this is kind of good for like uh, singling out a target in Trample. All right, first split between that is Casting Trample grants 6% base life as Fortify. And then the next split is Casting Trample grants 20 Spirit. Then we got Boulder. Boulder is unearth a large rolling boulder that knocks back enemies cru and crushing enemies, dealing number percent damage with each hit. Then we got the first passive is when Boulder reaches the end of its path, enemies hit are slowed by 30% for two seconds. If Boulder overpowered enemies are stunned for a number of seconds instead and then that first split is while you have any fortify boulder has a 75 percent increased critical strike chance and then the split of that is boulder's critical strike chance is increased by three percent each time it deals damage all right then we got rabies shapeshift into a werewolf and perform an infectious bite on it Target dealing 29.4% damage and applying an additional 55.65% poisoning damage over 6 seconds. Infected enemies spread rabies to other surrounding targets. First passive for rabies is rabies poisoning damage also increases over the lifetime of its disease, dealing times 4% bonus damage at maximum duration. Alright, first split of that is rabies spreads 10% faster. And then the next split between that is Rabies deals its total poisoning damage in number of seconds instead of number. So I'm guessing you kind of make um, the duration of poison less, but the amount of damage more because the duration is less. So it kind of makes it so you really like, um, it doesn't make it so you have to run around if there's a big target as much. It lowers that duration of waiting them out. All right, now for ultimates, and I'm gonna make sure I don't uh, skip over ultimates. So let's go over ultimates first and then the passives. So first ultimate is Petrify. Encase all enemies in stone, stunning them for three seconds and deal times 25% increased critical strike damage to enemies affected by Petrify. Against bosses, critical strike damage bonus is increased by number percent and its duration is increased by number of seconds. First passive for Petrify is Petrify's effect duration are increased by one second. Next one is, and there's no split I see here for now, uh, killing an enemy affected by Petrify and grants 25 spirit. Next ultimate is Cataclysm. A massive storm follows you for 8 seconds, tornadoes knocking back enemies and lightning strikes wildly dealing 54.6% damage. First passive, there's no split here as well, is Cataclysm's duration is increased by 2 seconds. And then we have lightning strike from Cataclysm make enemies vulnerable for 2 seconds. Next ultimate is Lacerate. Shave shift into a werewolf, become immune and quickly dashing 10 times between enemies in an area dealing up to 420% damage that's huge oh my gosh anyway all right next uh first passive for lacerate is each lacerate deals a critical strike heal for wait each time lacerate deals a critical strike heal for three percent of maximum life um if you're hitting 10 times three percent you got 30 percent of your max life back so basically 30 percent of your like total life back that's huge La next passive is lacerate's initial strike is guaranteed to critically strike and deals tw times tw 200 percent increased damage all right so you're gonna get three percent like back no matter what because of that right there all right next pa uh ultimate is grizzly raid shape shift into a dire werebear for 10 seconds gaining 20 percent bonus damage and 20 percent damage reduction the damage bonus is increased by three percent for each second while in this form kills extend the duration by one second up to 
10 seconds and i do know with grizzly rage you get whole new skill bar of different skills so like if you look at this and you're like wow that's really not that crazy it is going to add different abilities to your skill bar while you're in grizzly bear form so basically for that duration of you being in this form you have these enhanced abilities or something all right next first passive for that is you are unstoppable while in grizzly rage is active Next passive is gain 3.2% base life as fortified per second while in Grizzly Rage. So you're just like becoming this unstoppable beast while you're in this form. First passive is Quick Shift. When shape shifting skill transforms you into a different form, it deals times 5% increased damage. So this would be like if you want to maybe be a werebear and a human or whatever just different forms you have three different forms your human your werewolf and your werebear if you're swapping between those all the time this would help you then we got the next passive which is the split of that shape shifting fortifies you for 0.56 percent base life and then we have the next split is upon shape shifting into a werewolf or werebear gained four percent re damage reduction against elites passive area is nature magic skills deal times four percent increased damage to elites then we're splitting off of that is your earth skills deal times four percent increased damage to vulnerable enemies your storm skills deal times four percent increased damage to enemies that are stunned immobilized or knocked back then we got the split of nature magic skills that consume spirit heal you for one percent of your max life and then we have the split into nature magic skills deal times two percent increased damage triple this bonus if an earth skill is the next skill cast after a storm skill or a storm skill is the next cast after an earth skill it's kind of getting you into a rotation so kind of set your like your skill bar at a one two three four being a lightning earth uh earth lightning or uh, lightning earth, lightning earth, you know? So kind of like you have that rotation. All right, next passive is defensive posture. Increase the amount of fortify you gain but from all sources by 3%. And then we're gonna split into whenever you stun, uh, whenever you are stunned, immobilized, or knocked down, fortify for 2.56% of your life. Then the next split into that is 5% chance when struck to fortify you for 1.76% base life. And then those two go into Reduce the duration of control impairing effects by 3%. Triple this effect while you have Fortify for over 20% of your max life. All right, you guys. Now we're going to go into the Capstones. So Capstones, this is where you kind of go into to kind of really personalize your build and kind of further um, accentuate, yes, accentuate your build. So first one is uh, gain 20% additional maximum life while in werebear form for three seconds after leaving werebear form. While healthy, deal 20% increase in damage. That's huge. With all that fortify you're going to be doing, you're going to probably be while healthy unless you're like have too many leads on you or something. All right, next one is bestial rage. After being a werewolf for 2.5 seconds, gain 20% increased attack speed for 15 seconds. After being a werebear form for 2.5 seconds, deal 20% increased damage over 15 seconds. This is for if you have abilities that are swapping you in and out, kind of like with earth and lightning. This is kind of like you go from werebear to werewolf and you're, you know, you're in and out of those forms uh, periodically. And this is really gonna increase that, kind of making you a hybrid. Next one is Lupin Ferocity. Uh, every sixth werewolf skill hit critically strikes and deals times 60% increased damage. This is kind of going to increase this healing from here as well, or, uh, you know, overall everything you do, but kind of like making so you're going to have at least two attacks that are going to heal you with Lacerate. That's really cool. All right, next passive, Earth and Might. Damaging enemies with Earth skills has a 5% chance to restore all of your spirit cause your attacks to be guaranteed critical strikes for 10 seconds. This chance is increased by 10% for critical strikes, 100% if the target is stunned, immobilized, or knocked back. That's for your Earth skills. Nature's Fury, casting an Earth skill has a 20% chance to trigger free storm skill of the same category. Categories are, we'll have to see. I know that when abilities have, they have certain things like conjuring, um, different things like that companion although companion probably won't be in the same category but you get what i'm trying to say and then the next thing is in addition casting a storm skill has a 20 percent chance to trigger a free earth skill of the same category all right then so this is if you're gonna like with this go swap between lightning and earth back and forth that would be really that would really accentuate that all right next passive is your storm skills grant two spirit and deal 20 percent increased damage when damaging a vulnerable immobilized or slowed enemy 
All right, you guys, those are the capstones. Now we're going to move into the werewolf specific mechanic, which is these animal spheres here. Now I'm going to explain this real quick. So when you select something in your animal spirits, you can only select one in each animal spirit. Now this is going to happen, I think at level 15 is what they said for the druid. You're not going to see this until level 15, but either or you select one and then later on you'll be able to be uh, specialized into one of these which makes it so you can select two obviously it's not letting me do that right now but if i do that oh see i hit wolf and now i can select two so first we're going to go into each one and then we're going to just go from there so the deer deer is first one is prickle skin gain number thorns then we have gain 10 maximum spirit then we have take 10 percent reduced damage from elites and then we have reduced the duration of control and pairing effects by 15%. Then we got Eagle, Scythe Talons, gain 5% increased critical strike chance. Then we got gain 10% life. Then we got gain 10% attack speed. And then we got gain 30% critical strike damage. And then we got the Snake. Every numbers kill will cause your next earth skill to overpower. And then we got dealing lightning damage has a up to 20% chance to cause the target to emit a static discharge, dealing 60% lightning damage to surrounding enemies. Critical strikes with shape-shifting skills heal you for 3% life. And then we have nature magic skills have up to a 15% chance to reduce the cooldown of your, your ultimate skill by 2 seconds. That's pretty cool. Alright, now we got the wolf. Pack leader. Critical strikes have uh, up to 20% chance to reset cooldowns of your companion skills. Dealing damage has up to 15% chance to restore 10 spirit. Bolster, which is fortify for 10% of your maximum life when using defensive skill. Then Calamity, extend the duration of your ultimate skills by 25%. I would really love to know how Calamity would work with like Lacerate. Um, obviously it would work really, really well with Grizzly Rage. Obviously you just got a duration there, 25% of that, but with last rate, what would that do? Like, what did that, is that 25% on to 10? So was it two? Is it three? Is it 2.5? How does the 0.5 work? How does that work? So I would really like to know how that would work with last rate, but obviously each one of these has kind of a duration onto them besides last rate. So I'd really like to know how Calamity would work with last rate. But all right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it kind of helps you kind of decide how to go about things. Obviously, I'll be continuing this series. If you guys would like to see something next as far as a class, please comment down below what that would be. Um, like I said before, uh, subscribing would mean a lot to me. It would help out only like 2% of you or 0.2% of you are subscribers. Uh, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. It would help me kind of like increase my enthusiasm in editing these videos as editing can actually take longer than recording. Thank you guys so much. See you in the next video. Thank you.